I don't think the sky has ever been as blue again as it was that day. It was this gorgeous, almost heartbreaking shade of blue. And I was going to my son's school to help with a field trip. The weather was gorgeous, just beautiful. Late summer, early fall, that temperature where you're not too hot, not too cold, you know the kids won't get too fidgety on the bus. And as I went inside, the fifth graders were all lined up, doing what fifth graders do, bouncing and running around and wondering what they should be doing next. And we loaded them on the bus, finally got them settled down for our field trip to the National Children's Festival over at Wolf Trap. And just as the bus driver was getting ready to pull the door closed, we saw the principal come running out the door. He said, everybody needs to get off the bus and get in the school now. Now the kids groused and complained because that's what they do. We wandered on into the school. We all followed them in, herding them like chickens. But we were all really confused about what was going on. And he said, let's get them settled. I'll explain what's happening. Anybody over the age of about 30 probably knows what happened. He said, the school's on lockdown. A plane has hit the World Trade Center. A second plane has hit. And we're pulling all the planes down out of the sky. We don't know what's going to happen next. So please just bring the kids in. We're in the DC area. We don't know if any of these children's families have been affected. Please don't talk about it while you're here. They left the TV on in the teacher's lounge so that they keep crap of what was going on there. And I went into my son's classroom. I said, OK, so what can I do? And the teacher smiled. She said, you know, We've had a lot of training about what to do for lockdowns. They've never talked about the parents. How about if you go home and bake brownies? <laughs> Major national crisis. I went home and I baked brownies. <laughs> and by the time I got home, I thought, well, I really need to know what's going on here. So I turned on the TV. Worst mistake I made in my life. The television was like a tractor beam. <laughs> and by the time the brownies were cool enough to take to the school, both buildings had fallen. Pentagon had been hit. The plane had hit in Shanksville. And they were just starting to show pictures of what was going on. I mean, that, the picture of that first cloud and the terrified people running through. And I think that's a day when collectively America's heart broke. And unfortunately, when people's hearts break, they respond differently. Some people respond by saying, this horrible thing has happened. What can I do to make it better? As a mom, that is the first thing I think of. How can I fix this? And then you get the people who want revenge. They want to hurt the people that hurt them, which is kind of a two-year-old response. You know, when somebody hurts you, you want to hurt them back. Now, as recovery operations went on, we had our own operations going on here at the Pentagon. Those of us who wanted to truly help we're desperate for ways to help. A lot of people went down just to witness because something that enormous has to be witnessed. It's not something that you can just let go. But all the recovery people said, please stay out of the way. We're trying to get things done. And if you don't have experience in construction or health services or recovery operations, we need you to be as far away. They finally put up a fence because they knew here and in New York 
There was no way they were going to keep us away. We had, we had to see for ourselves what was going on. Now I say we in general. I, I'm a product of Catholic school, and I learned to take direction at an early age. So when somebody tells me to stay away, I stay away. And instead, I worked with a lot of other people, gathering supplies for the people who were down in the hole doing the work, making sure that they had water, that they had uh, sanitary supplies. Big thing was gloves. They always needed gloves. They were looking for socks because they were working in muddy spaces and they just needed to be able to change their socks to get comfortable again. And when you think of the enormity of the situation, who thinks about socks? Who thinks about water bottles? So the scout troop that my boys were associated with all got together and we started collecting things, took them over. Salvation Army over on Glebe Road was one of the main drop-off points and they took things down. But then there were those people who wanted revenge. And in the first few days, we have saw some terrible things happen. And even now, it's been 20 years since it happened. There are people who still hold on to, I'm angry, I hate, those people did that to us. And while I don't think you see a lot of active hate, it's that insidious background stuff. <coughs> Leaving people out of things, calling them names, calling their children names. Who attacks a child? A child who wasn't even born. Think about it. We've got kids graduating from high school now who were not even alive when it happened. By and large, though, I truly obey, believe America is a good and loving country. We have our political differences, and there's a lot of hate engendered in there, but that's for another discussion. But I think by and large, if each of us takes responsibility for making a loving response, going out and helping one another, which is what we're here for, I think we can help heal not only the wounds that go all the way back, but wounds that have come forward since then. I hope you all will join me. This is a pledge that I take. I love this country. I love the people in it. I wish only the best for you. And I hope you will join me in helping make this country good too.